Hello and welcome to another episode of Bare Bones Wargaming, a show with no bells, no whistles, no frills, just a man, a camera, and his game. This episode, I'm going to do an unboxing episode here of an oldie, but some would say a goodie. Uh, I'm curious to find out if that is true uh, of a game that is 35 years old, the original version of it is. There was a reprint done in 2002 by a company called Sunset Games. But I'm going to show it because basically I know it's an older game, but I also know that some games, of course, are extremely hard to track down. Uh, and when you do, they usually cost a decent amount of money. So seeing what's inside the box can help people, you know, decide, you know, is this something I really want to pursue? Is this something that I really want to, you know, spend my money on? Because, you know... Um, some folks' budget is tighter than others. So, that's what we're going to do here today with Pacific Fleet. An adventure simulation game, as it says, by Hobby Japan Games, copyright 1983. Alright, so, to paraphrase R. Lee Ermey, if there is one thing I like is a good unboxing video. Well, let's just see what's inside, shall we? Holy smoke. What is that? What is that? What the beep is that? Of course, I use beeps because I want this to be a family-friendly show. If you don't know what I'm quoting, ask somebody to look it up. Alright, so as you can see, going back to the cover here, after I had my bit of fun, this uh, definitely a Roger McGowan um, deal on the cover there and I just picked this up unpunched and again it is originally a Japanese game so there's rules here in Japanese but there also the game comes with naturally enough English translation so let's see what we've got here well first of all we've got the game board and the game board here's one section of it okay as you can see here this is pretty bland here you've got you know, Pearl Harbor and Midway and Wake Island and Dutch Harbor. Notice the Mega Hexes. Uh, mega Hexes are seen in some recent games like uh, the Second World War, but I had never seen them in a game this old before, so that was kind of uh, interesting to me to see. So there's one part of the map board, and these are mounted map boards. Not super thick, though. If you take a look at it there, you see the edge. It kind of reminds one of the old, um, oh, you know, like the War and Peace boards that Avalon Hill did uh, back in the day. And here's another chunk of the board. Looks to be the other end over here. Okay, we've got uh, Australia down here, New Guinea and the Philippines. Uh, oh, no, wait, this is the middle section. I apologize. I was uh, orienting myself very well. There's Rabul. So, of course, this here is the uh, Solomon Islands. And then last but not least over here, we have the mainland together with the terrain effects chart and the terrain key as you can see up there at the top let me swing around the other side because I know that could be annoying with my arm in the way and there you go that's the game board okay not super huge but when you see how many counters are involved here this truly is a strategic game uh, on the Pacific theater uh, although it does have you know decent detail because you've got the Gilberts down here and you have the Marshalls here Okay, a uh, Spirit of Santo and Fiji even down here as well. Okay, so that's the game board. So, and again, this, this game is basically, I mean, it's unpunched. It's it's mint, near mint, I guess you could say, condition. Of course, it won't remain unpunched for much longer. <laughs> then we've got the English translation rules here, just typed up. Um, as you can see, just stapled up here at the corner. Okay, but I mean, you know, nicely organized, especially for a game from 1983. I mean, you know, there's only so much you can expect when you're going that far back in time. So, um, there are PDF files available of this if you, you know, want to print it and make it bigger, which is what I did. I'm not going to show that here, but I did. And what I do with my um, rule books that I print is I put them in binders. And then I just, of course, on the cover of the binders, I put uh, the titles of all the rule books that are in there. Okay. 
So that's the English translation rule book. Again, nothing too fancy there. Here is the original Japanese booklet. And again, in case I guess if you're fluent in Japanese, that's you know, no worries and stuff. I myself am I don't have a gift for languages, so I you know yeah. So I'm glad there's the English translation. Let's put it that way. Okay, what else do we got here? Okay. So this is Pacific Fleet. Oh, interesting, I didn't realize that. It was done by Quarter Deck Games here in the USA. They're the ones that did the translation um, and all. Uh, here, as it mentions here, all the original Japanese rules, charts, and tables along with English translations of each one of those. Okay, so that's cool. You got your combat result table here, the US one. Pretty basic, straightforward. The strength on each side, it looks like. So this looks like a comparison of strength table. Okay, down here you got the different air units. And these are, um, I think if I remember from scanning the rules, because I've only scanned the rules yet, they're like multipliers or something, depending on the year. Um, yeah. And then there's the Japanese one. So the front and back of that as well. And of course, here's the terrain effects chart, which we saw on the map. Say. And again, you know, most of these English translations, I mean, you know, especially back in the day, you don't expect anything too fancy. I mean, you know, it's just, you know, it's just the way it was back then, so to speak. So, let's see here. I'm having a hard time separating, making sure these cards are off. So here is the English translation here of the uh, tables that we were just looking at. Units you can move here for different things. And what else do we have here? We have an errata sheet. Some Q&A it looks like too, which again back in the day, you know, I'm sure those of you old enough to remember the uh, yes-no format stuff. <laughs> uh, there's the sequence game sequence summary. Oh, this is nice. Checklist of important rules. Okay, very cool. And then we have here, now this was interesting when I opened the game and kind of looked through. Um, somebody made a photocopy here of the turn record chart. Uh, and then of course on the back we have all the information that's here. Uh, speed and such as well too. Um, interestingly enough, the land units that have uh, certain factors are movable by C. And here's the scenarios. Again, nothing fancy here. Of course, I'm going to start with, you know, Guadalcanal because it's only one turn. Although each turn has seven phases to it. Um, kind of help with that and stuff. So there's all the information there. So the campaign games. Then we've got some examples of play here on this yellow piece of paper. So surface combat, ground movement, task force use, air sea combat. Very cool. Diners and players notes, also good. And here's that thing that was photocopied on the back there. This is the original Japanese one. And here's the turn record chart, along with the victory point chart and the phase record track, which you keep track of um, your task force as they go out um, in the different phases. They can only stay out for so long. And then this is more for the two-player game. Uh, basically, well, there's display. I mean, you're going to need this display no matter what, even if you're playing solo like me. But then there's the two-player um, mega hexes here. They're all numbered, if you notice that, on the mountain map board there, so you can plot um, your units and where they're going and stuff. There's uh, three of those all together. There's one for, as I recall, one for Japan, one for um, the U.S., and then one for the U.S. allies. And then last but not least, we have the counters. And again, you know, I got this unpunched, okay? But this truly is a strategic game because if you look at this, there's only three counter sheets here. We've got one, two, and three. That's it. Now, of course, something that can be a bummer to some folks, the counters are unnamed. You know, on the back, it just says what kind of um, units they are. There's no names on them. So I know that's a big deal to some people. But again, this is very much a strategic game. So I'm not surprised. Because uh, if you look, here's all the Japanese fleet, basically. From here up, you only get one sub-counter 
uh, that you use, okay, for the for um, for placing subs and stuff in the rules. I mean, look at the U.S. Army. There's not that many counters. The Marines have even fewer ones here. Okay, this one I find quite amusing. I'm gonna just show you this one here. I I don't know what's up with that. I I don't know if that's a symbol of quarter deck games. The bowl there with what appears to be two dice. No, he's snorting. He's snorting. It just looks like dice. He's snorting. So I don't. I'm kind of curious now. Is there anything on the back of that one? Oh, it's Halsey. It's the Halsey marker. That's hilarious. Okay, which apparently he did not like that nickname, from what I understand. So, but again, if you notice here, you know, there's no names. It's just all, you know, simple, straightforward counters because this is very much a strategic game. So. That is what you get, and then, well, there's also, you get a tray and a couple of dice, as you can see there, that I have not pulled out yet. And then the back is all in Japanese. Um, that's why I didn't show it right away at the beginning. So, that's what you will find in a copy of Pacific Fleet if you get the Hobby Japan version. Now, the Sunset Games version, which, interestingly enough, was the original version I owned before I picked this copy up. Uh, I had it, and... I had Pacific Fleet when I was kind of just starting out wargaming. I'm getting into it deeper, and I don't think I was quite ready for it. So I went ahead and I sold it off. And um, I just recently acquired this one, which, uh, for those of you who might see some of my postings on Board Game Geek under the threads like, you know, what war game did you get this month? Um, that's why I was a little <laughs> panicky <laughs> because um, my package went missing. I picked this up, and I also picked up Trial of Strength, another um, game that's been out of print, although supposedly Lock and Load is doing a second edition, but I haven't seen anything about it yet as far as it being released. I thought it was supposed to be released last year, or even the year before, but I guess it hasn't happened. But anyway, um, but the package just went missing, and, um, you know, I, it kept just saying, you know, transit to the next, next um, location, and I was just thinking to myself, great, they lost it. And, you know, it's not like it would have been you know, something I could just call a person and be like, hey, you know, they lost the package, can you send me another one? Because they only had one copy of each of these, not surprisingly. Um, so, bottom line, it did manage to get here. Box was beat up, but the games themselves, as you can see from what I just showed you on this video, the games themselves were A-OK. -okay. Um, <laughs> I swear, I swear I'm, I'm leery of ordering anything from the state of Indiana anymore. This is the third time. I've had this kind of thing happen. The other two times, one package went all the way to Rhode Island before it came here to me in the great Commonwealth of Virginia. And then the other one went all the way to Florida before it came back to Virginia. So I, I don't know. I, yeah, okay, we'll just let it go at that. So, anyway, so for those of you who might be thinking about Pacific Fleet, if you want to track down a copy of this, this is what you will find in the Hobby Japan box. One thing I do know the difference between this and the Sunset Games version is the Sunset Game version has uh, map sheets and not mounted map boards. So I don't know if that, you know, some people, there's a huge debate. I should take that back. I know it matters to some people. Um, to me, I'm not super picky. I mean, mounted map boards are fine, but if it's not mounted, I'm, you know, not throwing a fit, so to speak, about it. But for those of you who it does matter a lot to, you probably want to try and find this version because the other one has map sheets. Okay. So, at some point, I'm going to be trying this in the near future right now. And while I was waiting for this to resurface, as it were, uh, <laughs> I feel like Quint and Jaws waiting for the barrels to come back up when they couldn't find this thing. Um, but while I was waiting for it, I started playing a campaign game of the Fires of Midway. And, whoo, that's been ugly. I've already lost half of the U.S. carrier fleet. I've lost... The Enterprise, the Lexington, and the Wasp. I lost the Enterprise and Lexington, both in the same battle, and the Japanese have lost nothing. They have all ten carriers left yet. So I'm currently doing the third of the four campaign battles, and um, I've thrown everything into the fire, everything I have left, the Saratoga, the Yorktown, and the Hornet. Um, and then right now, it's, with this battle, it's up against the Hirio, the Akagi, and the Ryoho, so we'll see how that goes. But... Um, Anyway, so I hope to do a video on this, a playthrough video, uh, to give people an idea of how this plays and how it functions as well. So, there you have it. The unboxing of Pacific Fleet by Hobby 
Japan games. So, this is Tim Korshner from Bare Bones Wargaming saying thanks for watching and we'll see you next time from somewhere in the Pacific Theater. Um, I also, because I found it cheap, like five bucks, um, I also picked up a copy of what one of my um, subscribers mentioned, Conquest of the Pacific, which you need access to allies pieces to play with. Um, I picked it up because it's cheap and also because I'm always looking for ideas because someday I, I am going to try, I think, to make my own Pacific Theater game and see, um, you know, see if I can make it work, see if I can kind of incorporate some of the things that I think are missing in other games and some of the things I've read um, in other books. Uh, about the Pacific Theater, especially the early part of 42, uh, well, the end of 41 through um, the middle of roughly 43. So anyway, so I might do something with that too. We'll wait and see exactly what that's like once it finally gets here. So as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next episode.